What's the weirdest thing you've seen at a friend's house that they thought was completely normal? Their mom had an eating disorder or some psychological issue and kept only her preferred soda, milk, and cereal in the house. The kids had to keep their food in their room or eat at school or their friend's house. If they invited friends over they were expected to bring their own food unless they were okay with eating cereal. It wasn't poverty, she had a very high-paying job, her ex-husbands were all also in the same high-paying field and paying child support. As a family they had the absolute best of everything else and she didn't mind if you ate her food and would offer it freely. They just weren't allowed to have any other food in her kitchen. When I was an elementary student, my best friend's dad kept a porn collage out where everyone could see it. His bedroom was in a nook in the living room closed off, some of the time, by a curtain. And the collage took up a good section of the wall. It was made out of cutouts of porn magazines with extremely explicit pictures. We are talking vaginas leaking C asterisk M, breasts covered in C asterisk M, women sucking on penises, and, of course, penises in vaginas. All cut out so that it was just the body part without much context, like you didn't really see the whole woman's face, just her lips around a C asterisk CK and some of her nose. Six-year-old me thought it was pretty gross. Weirdly enough this guy was a child psychologist, so, what the hell? Anyway, my friend thought it was normal. My parents were not happy about it when they found out it existed. I used to work for a cable TV company. One house we went into was known as the cat house. If you were downwind from the house, you could smell the ammonia from the cat piece. We had to go inside to install their internet. Dozens upon dozens of cats everywhere. The smell was vomit-inducing. The air inside the house was heavy and moist and reeked. There was a giant hole in the side of the couch, and the cats went inside the couch. I can only imagine it was lovely inside the couch. They just dumped cat food onto the kitchen table, and the cats would just climb the table and eat. The rest of the house was horrid. We had to make excuses to go out to get things from our trucks so we could breathe. We went into the house in shifts. There were two adult couples living in the house looking to be in their 30s. They just sat on the couch, the same one with the hole, and acted like they didn't notice the smell and acted like everything was completely normal. There was a different house I remember where the basement floor was completely covered in dog C asterisk AP. You were unable to walk in the basement without stepping in it. They apparently never removed it as there were piles several feet high of dog C asterisk AP in various parts like they shoveled it there. We refused to go down there and left. My great aunt lived through the Great Depression, so she kept a lot of stuff. Not really H asterisk guarding, though, because she used everything up eventually. The one exception was styrofoam takeout cartons from the only restaurant she liked. When she died and we started cleaning out her house, we found decades worth of these cartons in her cellar. They were all closed, stacked very neatly, floor to ceiling, in dozens of columns, forming a white styrofoam wall that effectively halved the cellar. She had cleaned them all carefully, as there were no traces of food in them, though some had been stained by whatever food had once been in them. I was given the job of opening each one to make sure nothing of value had been left in them. After several hours, I confirmed that she had stored almost 2,000 styrofoam boxes and that not a single one had anything in it. When I was growing up my best friend's mom was a H asterisk garter. Not the type that keeps literal trash, but she would buy stuff that she thought she could sell later. There was one time I went over, and she had two stoves, a dryer, three couches, a couple of stereos, and three slash four s of a pallet of Christmas wrapping paper in the living room. She is addicted to garage sales and free posts on Craigslist and Facebook, but never actually gets around to selling the stuff. It's all stuff that is decades out of date too, so nobody really wants it in the first place. In her mind if she can make a dollar off it then she will buy it and store it. This doesn't count because it wasn't a friend and I know that the fact that it's someone you're comfortable with is a big part of the reason for the thread, but this story's too much to not share. Cat litter. Like over a thousand pounds of litter. I was an investigator for the state, looking into child abuse and neglect cases and got called to a house because the kids were always unclean. I went to the house completely expecting to just have to give the same old hygiene speech and assess the situation for hazards around the house. The instant I walked into the place, I was hit in the face with the horrid smell of ammonia. I've had cats my whole life so I immediately knew where that smell came from. Cat piece can be used as a weapon, it really is the most intense smelling liquid I've ever encountered. 
Immediately I start looking around for the source of the smell but it was coming from everywhere. No direction smelled worse, or better, no matter where I walked in the house. That's when I looked up and noticed the ceiling of their TV room was sagging and wet. It looked like it could cave in. I asked if they were having any roof issues, and they said no. We were on the first floor, and there was a floor above us, so I figured the roof wasn't the culprit. I asked to go upstairs and they said oh you don't want to go up there, that's the cat box. I walked upstairs and went to open the door to the room above the TV room and the door was hard to push open, like I was opening it onto the beach. I pushed harder and was hit with a wall of moist air and flies. Cat litter, used cat litter, was everywhere. All over the floor, bags and bags of litter dumped straight onto the ground. They used that room as the cat box. They wouldn't clean it, they would just add another 20-pound bag to the pile and used a rake to spread it out to keep the hills down. I was mortified, but had to keep my composure because you'll never get someone to understand what they are doing wrong if you come at them with no sense of understanding or compassion. The kids ended up being removed from that home, but not because of the litter. They disclosed other concerns that were proven to be accurate. But I'll never forget that sight and can still smell it while I type this. A friend up the street had a picture of a guy on his living room wall that was framed. Normal looking guy with a beard sitting in a chair. I asked him once who the man was. An uncle? No, he says, that's God. I was too young at the time to really think anything more about it. It was not until years later I found out his family had been involved in a cult and the picture of that man was their leader. I'm gonna out myself here. Growing up, from about the age of 6 all the way up to age 19 when I left home, we had pet chickens that would live in the house with us. On average we had three chickens at a time, but at one time we had five. They used to sleep in the laundry at night, in their own repurposed wax banana boxes for each hen, paper towels and newspaper lining the bottom of the boxes and a tightly rolled up towel in the middle for them to perch on. During the day the chickens had free range of the backyard and our lounge room. Their food and water bowls were laid out neatly just inside the front door, where they would happily come and go. It wasn't unusual to find the hen sleeping either underneath our dining table or perched on the designated roosting chair during the hottest parts of the day. And yes, they did poop inside the house all the time and they would drop feathers and dander when they molted. We had a poo bucket that was kept in the lounge room where we put all the cleaned up poop from off the floor slash furniture and when that got full, the contents were flushed down the toilet, which of course caused quite a few blockages. The chickens were very friendly and would often come up to you and perch on your leg for pats and cuddles. As a kid, I used to sit on the floor every afternoon and evening watching TV with at least one hen perched on my leg enjoying some cuddle time. Looking back now, I know that this is hella weird, but they were treated equally just like a family cat or dog would be. And the eggs we got from them were some of the best I've ever had in my life, and I never once got sick with salmonella. But yeah, I wouldn't recommend having house chickens, unless you are prepared to clean up a lot of poop. Edit, wow I never expected this comment to blow up so much. It warms my heart knowing that you all found my quirky little house chickens so fun and interesting to talk about, thank you. Through grades 8 and 9, I was friends with an upper middle class girl from a family that did those yearly portraits where everyone wore a matching turtleneck and blue jeans. The first thing I saw when I walked into the house was a very large framed photo of her mother, completely nude. The photo was from a boudoir shoot she had bought to mark her 40-something birthday. She had other, much less nude, photos from the same shoot that were scattered around the house, but they were so small and out of the way that you barely noticed them. This one took up an entire wall and was one of the first things you would see upon opening the door. It was the centerpiece of the foyer. Since my friend was fairly popular and had a big house, she hosted a lot so most of our classmates had seen it at one point or another. Whenever someone asked, she would say something about how her mom just loved having family pictures around to look at. Bird nest in the couch. Family has a giant poorly trained cockatiel who free flies around the home and has made a foot wide and 8 inch deep nest inside the foam cushion on their couch. Filled with debris like cardboard and bottle caps. They use the couch as if it wasn't there, even sitting on the sliver of cushion that the nest is on. Bonkers. My best friend when I was in my late teens was Sicilian. His parents were right from there. First time I went to his house, they were hollering and screaming at each other. I was like sh asterisk t do you want me to leave, and he said no, this is just how we talk. 
Every time I went to his house, someone was hollering. My best friend in high school had a poster on her wall that said be thin. She would cover it up with a tapestry when friends came over but she forgot to cover it up when I came over one day and she rushed to do it but I had already seen it. It turns out her father was constantly fat shaming her, she was maybe 15 to 16 when this happened, and this was her motivation to lose weight. Her family knew about the poster and had no concerns. We had two German foreign exchange students in my class in high school and we asked them this question. We heard the usual, portion and car sizes. Then they said it's weird that we have carpet in the bathroom. We were all confused by what she meant but we learned the host family they were staying with had carpet in their bathrooms. I'm not talking a shower mat. Fully carpeted bathrooms. I can only imagine the smell and musk. It was fun explaining to them that that's just weird in general, not just a weird American quirk. Not friends' houses, but I have seen the following things in people's homes, a shop mannequin dressed in lacy lingerie on the bed, a bathtub full of electrical items like toasters and radios, a toy doll hanging from a ceiling light fitting, mushrooms growing out of the carpet, a weed farm, three weed farms, actually, about 20 years worth of newspapers stacked up in the bathroom. Oh, and one where the guy had nothing in the front room apart from one chair, a TV, and swords displayed on the walls. Not something I saw but what I didn't hear when I stayed over at a friend's house for the first time when I was seven years old, nothing. At night it was disturbingly quiet. No creaks, beeps, appliances, AC, running water, pipe noises, etc. They were far enough away from other houses and streets where you wouldn't hear other cars or neighbors. What was weirdest though was the lack of any ambient nature sounds outside. Silence never felt so loud.